So what is the difference between Gran Turismo 7 and Assetto Corsa Competizione? I don't mean game structure, I mean physics. And it's not really about this one is better than the other one. What does it mean? How does it feel? A couple of years in the sim racing subreddit, Cal3001 and Ebblesphere created some threads showing side by side lap times between Assetto Corsa Competizione and the Gran Turismo 7. This is a really interesting topic because Gran Turismo 7 gets a lot of flack for being easy mode or a sim kit with no depth, but is that really the case? Out of the gate, both titles have a very different crop of cars. ACC follows the SRO roster that has many evil versions, Gran Turismo as roads, and generic GT3 cars called Group 3. Some are based on real things, others are imaginary, but I'm going to focus where they intersect the most, which is not an easy feat. Whoever said that Gran Turismo 7 is easy mode or a game for babies certainly hasn't driven the R8 at Suzuka. I was breaking in a straight line. This serves as a good way to start this conversation. The handling of the cars is as similar as it is different. Take the Lexus, for example. It is quite similar in the way that the Assetto Corsa Competizione version drives. It's understeer in the exit, but that can be somewhat mitigated by the throttle control. The level of lateral grip between tires is not too different as long as you drive with the race hards on Gran Turismo. The Audi R8 though, while it's very difficult at Suzuki in Assetto Corsa Competizione, at Gran Turismo 7 it's absolute death on wheels. The amount of yaw it produces due to the engine at the back makes the driving almost uncontrollable. Corner entry requires a lot of input separation, mid-corner demands the Audi to be stabilized into the corner, otherwise the rear will release. In Competizione, the Audi is a handful in most tracks, but that comes as an advantage because there is a definite edge where the loose handling can be exploited for maneuverability, it keeps within a usable package. The entry oversteer on the R8 can be used to get the car positioned for the corner exit, which comes as an advantage. But this dead on wheels behavior in Gran Turismo 7 for the Audi is made worse by the stock setup and system simulation. Take the same Audi at Nürburgring and the car is far easier to control at the corner entry. It still wants to release but it won't be as dramatic. The setup or the way they bop the car allied with the track almost removes the extreme yaw from the R8. Messing with the setups, adding stiffness at the front helps more at Nürburgring while it did close to nothing at Suzuka. And speaking of setups, the setups in ACC are far deeper with more control over the suspension details. Tire grip can be also maximized by tuning the tire pressures. Also, there's more control over the systems of the car that will impact the way it behaves. Traction control in Gran Turismo has always been a strange topic to me. It is oftentimes, if not always, faster to go without traction control. Using traction control will impede massively the power delivery in the way that hinders the progress of the car. This is almost unthinkable in ACC. Sure, you can use cars like the Audi with very low traction control, but it still uses it. You try to turn it off, it will make the car flip at a whiff of the throttle. Then you have cars like the M4 or the Ferrari, which use extremely high traction control. Then you have the example of the Aston Martin, which uses extremely high traction control to values. Each traction control on Assetto Corsa Competizione between cars will work completely different and will give different dynamics to the way the car will be driving. Then you have the brake bias, it's only possible to move the settings 5 points forwards or backwards compared to the granularity you have on ACC. All of these systems help a lot to tame a car in Competizione. This level of system simulation in ACC, it is unparalleled, it can't really compare to Gran Turismo, it's so much more evolved. Involved. And in reality, it's not only against Gran Turismo, it's pretty much against all other sims out there. We can't really speak about physics differences without speaking about the tire model. In condensing the way ACC drives to me, it is basically slip angles surfing. The not so condensed part of it is that the model is very sensitive to different pressures and conditions on the track. The tire model also has dynamic wear that reacts to the way how the tire was broken and from new. 
the temperature changes if you added any marbles and if you have flat spots in the tire. If the tire is cold and it warms up really, really fast, it's likely you also gonna break it. If you end up spinning up the car, this will result in laps of trying to cool down the tires and driving over glass. Because of all of these nuances, if you add in the dynamic weather, for example, it will allow you to think forward, plan the strategy around that dynamic, like if it's worth keeping a tire compound until the weather develops for the better for you, or going to the pits to change it, or just keep it until it's not worth it anymore. So the way that the tire physics work in Competizione gives you a huge depth in simulation. Gran Turismo is definitely more simplified in this department. Uh, there's tire wear, there's tire heat, there are compounds, but the wear is somewhat linear. In terms of driving, where hot laps are concerned, the Assetto Corsa tire is more danceable at the limit, but there is quite a lot of crossover between those because you really are not really trying to uh, make sure that your tire lasts long. But once you start racing, the dynamics of the Assetto Corsa Competizione tire are definitely superior and more interesting. The dynamic change of the track and the weather will affect its usability. GT has dynamic weather and dynamic grip, but it isn't really made with long races in mind. For example, when they emulate increased wear in the race, that wear will be linear. In Assetto Corsa, that same wear will depend on what you have done to the tire or the track has done to the tire. I couldn't talk about grip and tires without mentioning an issue with competition and shocks or suspension, I'm not sure which. In this case, it's the way it reacts with curbing and sausages. Some cars glide over them and will have no problems whatsoever. It's like going over a carpet. Others, like the Ferrari, hitting a curb with the compression and compression of the suspension can make the car lose control. Gran Turismo suspension, while more simplified in most cases, it provides a better behavior at this specific edge scenario. That doesn't mean it's always the case, but sometimes I think it's better to keep it simple. Last point I would like to raise is the force feedback. None of these titles are known to have wow levels of force feedback. That would be the original Assetto Corsa, but I will say that Competizione just feels better to me. I love Gran Turismo Sports force feedback, but for 7 I could only have any level connection to the track with the Logitech Pro DD wheel. Everything else, no matter what it is, even the Logitech G923, it is really not that good. Competizione's force feedback is very informative from the center, it tells the load relatively well in any steering angle range no matter the lateral load, it just makes you feel that you are in connection to the car. Gran Turismo 7 though, it feels just super vague, especially on the center area, and it doesn't really give you the same detail and the same control in the car. With all of this, I can't really say that Gran Turismo 7 is easy mode. I find that between both, this ends up being more about the details making a difference rather than both of them being worlds apart. Competizione strives for the racing and driving details that are important in endurance racing. Gran Turismo goes a different way. It drops the overall complexity of the simulation present in the Seto Corsa Competizione, all the nitty gritty for the sake of accessibility, keeping all the important simulation details that bring a lot of crossover between between all the sims out there. And well, these are my opinions on this subject. Let me know yours, but what you really should see next are these sim racing hot takes. 